In his commentary, Lamar Williamson writes, When is an ending not an end? When a dead man rises from the tomb and when a gospel ends in the middle of a sentence. Our English translations bring the Gospel of Mark to a fine ending. I would guess she didn't even think twice about it as we heard it a moment ago. But the earliest Greek manuscripts read like this. The women went out from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone. They were afraid for how it reads in Greek, ending the gospel right there in mid-sentence. They said nothing to anyone they were afraid for. So that's what we really have for the end of the earliest recorded gospel writing. It's hardly an ending at all. As Dr. Cynthia Campbell notes, we are left waiting, unresolved with a dangling preposition. It reminds me of the late Paul Harvey I remember many family car trips to Grandma's house in the 70s and the 80s when I loved to listen to his radio broadcasts. I listened intently for the rest of the story, where he would tell a true story, and then he would leave you hanging for a while while he promoted the products of some of his sponsors and reported some current news. Eventually, he would come back around to tell you the rest of the story. Since we would leave on, after school and after Dad got home from work on Fridays, we would be driving late into the night to get to Grandma's house. So sometimes I'd only be half awake when his show came on the radio. And then I'd be so mad at myself if I inadvertently fell back asleep before he made his way to page four, the rest of the story. Now, if you had been reading along in your own Bible a few moments ago, you would be thinking, now wait a minute, you didn't read all the way to the end of the Gospel of Mark. You stopped at verse 8, while my Bible keeps going right on for a dozen or so more verses. And well, I would say that my Bible keeps going too. But the earliest written copies of the Gospel of Mark really do end at verse 8. It appears that there were some first century Paul Harvey wannabes running around, as it was only in later copies of the Gospel of Mark that verses 9 through 20 appear. Probably some very well meaning believers taking it upon themselves to tell the rest of the story. Have you ever thought about how it might also be up to us to tell the rest of the story? Maybe Mark ends his gospel mid-sentence for all the believers in all the generations to come to live into the rest of the story. The women go to the tomb on that first Easter morning, expecting to see the body of Jesus. And instead, they see a young man dressed in a white gown. He tells them that Jesus has been raised. He then tells them to go and tell Go and tell the other disciples. They are commissioned right then and there on the spot to go and tell, to share the good news. And yet that last sentence ends the story here. They said nothing to anyone. They were afraid for. But obviously, they did fulfill their commission. They did tell someone who told someone else who told someone else, who told a lot of people. Because a generation after it happens, Mark writes this story down. And then Matthew writes the story down, followed by Luke and then John. Then many others hear it and they believe it. And now, over 2,000 years later, we can read the story and believe and share it too. Easter Sunday, in some traditions, is called Resurrection Sunday. It is a high point of the church year, and what it represents is pivotal to the Christian faith, for it shows us the power of God through Jesus' resurrection from the dead. This is personal because it reminds us that through the weariness of life, through the loneliness and pain and fear we experience, resurrection, a rising up, 
is possible. What we see in Jesus' resurrection paves the way for our own rising up out of the difficulty, challenge, and despair we experience in our own lives. Paul Harvey understood that in the living of his life. When he was just three years old, his father, who was a police officer, was killed in the line of duty. And yet, Paul Harvey got up from that tragedy and grew into an inspirational storyteller that millions would call friend. We understand this in the living of our lives, too. Through losing a job, foreclosing on a mortgage, ending a marriage, receiving a diagnosis we didn't expect to hear, or grieving the death of a loved one. Just like the women on that first Easter morning, we might not see it right at the moment, but there is always a rising up from where we are, with the rest of the story waiting to be lived into and also shared with others. The darkness of Good Friday is not the end of the story for Jesus, nor is the disappointment or times we are discouraged in life the end of the story for us. That is the promise Christ brings to us through Easter. And that is the hope that enables us in our faith to carry us through the tough times in life. Because of that, it is important to see Easter for the beginning that it really is. That is precisely the kind of celebration Easter was intended to be for us and the church. And this is intended for this very day. Today, it's a new beginning. A new beginning that opens the way to our sharing of the rest of the story. Amen.